A few years ago in Nigeria, I would probably not publicly be sitting with you like this. And people who are hurting others are themselves hurt deep inside. Those who are causing misery to others are miserable themselves. Many times I find in the so-called underdeveloped countries or developing countries, there is low self-esteem among the youth. Gurudev Shri Shri Ravishaka. Let me, on behalf of over 200 million Nigerians, formally welcome you to Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much. They say every nation has a rhythm or has its own vibration. Since you came in, what have you been picking? What, what's, what's the vibration of Nigeria? Very good. Very resilient. And um, I feel very much at home here. What's the personal toll on you? I mean, how do you navigate through life on a daily basis? Oh, yeah, I, I sleep three, four hours. And the rest of the time, my life is for the world and for the people of the planet. But, you know, any country I went, I always felt I belonged to that country. I never felt any barrier between uh, any nationality, religion or race. Nothing. I felt everyone is part of me and belongs to me. When you go to local places, do you eat their local food? Oh, yeah. What do you eat? Vegetarian. Oh, you're Anything vegetarian. vegetarian. It, it, so can you eat rice? Oh, yeah. Uh, rice is our staple food. So the most, I must make sure I tell your team for you to eat jollof rice, Nigerian jollof rice. Oh, so okay. you can. So if somebody asks you, have you been to Nigeria? You say yes. The, the next thing they will ask you is if you've had uh, plantain, Nigerian plantain. We'll call it dodo. Oh, Angelo, Angelo Francis, is really. I am yet to discover all the fruits and vegetables this continent has. You know, I was in South America recently, and I found out in um, in Brasilia, uh, and also in uh, Bolivia, they have three thousand varieties of potatoes. Oh, wow. You imagine three thousand varieties of potatoes. So. The world is full of diversity, fauna and flora. And that's the wealth of that's the world. That's the beauty of the that's world. And, but some people don't understand that. They just want to narrow everything down and they, they can't tolerate diversity. That thing that we have to take care in society, people don't become fanatics. And whether it's religious fanatism or any other type of fanatism, I have never, I'm 61 years old, and until four or five days ago, I've never truly meditated, you know. And for me, trying it, the experience was just amazing. By the second day, I was, I was in a different space. And um, I left here, went for a meeting, and the meeting really got chaotic. But I was just calm so and calm. And it was, and everybody, and that's the, that's the beautiful thing. Everybody noticed it, and they're like, you don't seem worried. And I'm like, well, because I would rather we focus on what the next steps uh, would be. Um, how can we make people see how powerful uh, meditation and, and prison writing is? You know, when I started 41 years ago, there was so much prejudice, there was so much resistance for breathing and meditation and all that. I said, hey, that's not for normal mainstream people. That's for people out there. <laughs> that sort of concept was there. But today, you'd be surprised to hear almost one third of world's population are doing and are getting benefited. And when you share your experience and people would, many would say, oh yeah, I also would like to try it, you know. A few years ago in Nigeria, I would probably not publicly be sitting with you like this. I would not want people to know that I'm consulting you publicly because it has been, the quest for inner peace and meditation has been demonized. No, that those days have gone. I would say 20, 30 years ago, the type of prejudice people have today know. And scientists have proved there are more than 100 benefits that one get by just relaxing and meditating. So your brain functions better, your body functions better, and everyone wants to be free from all the little diseases that they go through. And wellness is the new mantra in the world. And 
even all the Fortune 500 companies, they make it part of their, uh, you know, um, wellness package. So also, we are conducting programs for many corporations around the world. We build churches, we build places of worship, and the more we build them in the last how many years, the more impoverished we have become. You know, uh, buildings could be built, churches could be built, museums are being built, but building people is most essential. Building strong leaders and uh, leadership from the grassroots level has to come up. So I have always focused on building human resources. Make very strong individual who is resilient, who have the calmness of mind, who can uh, stand up to any challenges. This is very important. You know, United Nations declared International Day of Yoga. I was there and the Secretary General of UN at that time, Ban Ki-moon. I mean, I led the meditation there. You know what he said? Gurudev, this is needed before every negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> because it keeps the mind calm. As I said, you know, even Japan, they have about more than 100 members in their 400 member parliament. They practice yoga meditation. They have a room allocated for uh, meditation and yoga. Similarly, there is a hall of silence in the Canadian parliament, in the American Congress. There is a place where people go and sit and meditate. So we need to, uh, as I said, build human potential. I totally agree with you. Um, you, you use the word developed countries. So the world is divided in two sharp divides, developed and undeveloped. What did those developed countries do? earlier on in their lives or in their existence that we didn't do? And why are we not developed? Well, if we ponder on it, there could be many reasons. One is the colonialism. Whenever colonialism has happened, it has really drained the resource of a country, number one. Second is education system. If our education system is, is meant only to create, uh, you know, workers but not entrepreneurs and leaders, then also a country cannot develop. And the third thing is uh, um, corruption. Any country which is clogged with corruption, the progress slows down. So here it is needed that the country's integrity and development of personality, at the same time empowering youth, not just giving freebies, but making them stand on their feet. That is very important. Many times I find in the so-called underdeveloped countries or developing countries, there is low self-esteem among the youth. I want to share with you an incident that happened in India in 1999. When we started our campus, uh, Art of Living campus, just outside Bangalore, there were very poor people all around and they would live just hand to mouth. A lot of unemployed youth so I gathered about 500 unemployed youths in the surrounding villages and I called the government of uh, Karnataka department, government of India department to come and present them all small scale industries, what they can do. So the gentleman came from the government side and he presented about 200 different industries. But you know the youth heard them all and they rejected all of them. I said, they had reason how this will not work, this will not work, this will. Then I asked them, okay, what is that that will work? He said, make me a bus driver, government bus driver or conductor or policeman. Give me a job. This was their request. That is the day I thought, no, I had to do something. So we uh, did a month-long training for them that we call it Youth Leadership Training Program. I tell you, after that program, each one of them became an entrepreneur. And now those persons who are wanting a policeman job, they are able to give job for two, three hundred people. So then we multiplied this all over the country. We did some of this YLTP in Ivory Coast, also in South Africa. It became very successful. 
because the youth no longer sit and wait for someone else to give them charity or give them a job. Now they got the energy, enthusiasm to be innovative and start a business of their own. If you had come to India a few years back and if you come now, you can see the clear difference. Now the country is full of entrepreneurs and there is flourishing with business everywhere. So this type of, uh, I think, training is necessary. Because here I find the youth are very vibrant. They have a lot of energy and enthusiasm. If they are channeled, uh, you know, properly, it can give a, uh, yield a very good result for the whole community as well. Nigeria today is is, is crying from from insecurity. From, so so there is so much fear. It's palpable in the air. Uh, is there any way we can attract that same kind of concerted meditation so that and see how if you can, if there's a way we can reduce insecurity and all of that because people need to see that these things can happen. See, it's insecurity which breeds insecurity. People who are creating insecurity are themselves not secure. True. And people who are hurting others are themselves hurt deep inside. Those who are causing misery to others are miserable themselves. They are not happy. They may appear to be happy. This will change the whole scenario. And that's what has happened uh, in our experience in last 41 years around the world. So um, we will have to work with people. I don't condemn anybody. I see there is a good person, a wonderful person hiding inside every criminal also. That simply he needs to be brought out. So if you see through my eyes, I see only very good people also. Just misguided, misled or hurt or wounded. They just need some healing touch, and the world can become a better place. I've read about your work in Colombia and, and, and even Ivory Coast. I'm just hoping that you can, you can uh, do some work with Boko Haram and, and all kinds of agitation that we have in Nigeria. I would love to do. At some point in your, in your journey. Uh, it's on that note that I'd like to say thank you very much for indulging us uh, this, for this little chat and we hope that uh, uh, you will visit us again and, and experience our cultures and the hospitality of the Nigerian people even more. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to invite you to come to India too. And uh, everyone, November, please do come. <laughs> okay. Thank Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.